Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dan from Fitness Being Free. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a conversation I had recently with a couple Olympic weightlifters. Um, Mike Service, who's uh, competed in the American Open 10 times. He won in 2011. Fantastic Olympic weightlifter. And also Chad Vaughn. Uh, Chad Vaughn's two-time Olympian. And we were talking a little bit about volume uh, of lifts. Now, if you look in the research about uh, building strength in Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, and these sports, um, volume is very important. And so is frequency. And in general, more volume, more frequency is going to lead to more strength gains. So if you look at some of the uh, the training programs at the top Olympians, it's, it's a lot of work. They're doing tons and tons of repetitions, lots of weight, um, and doing it very, very frequently. Uh, the thing is that you know if we're doing too much of this, you open yourself up to overuse injuries. For the average person that wants to get better at Olympic weightlifting, they're not necessarily going to be putting in the time and effort to build that volume over time to get to the point where they can handle it. The other point is they most likely have some mobility restrictions, which uh, is probably going to put some extra stress on your tissues, and over time you might end up with some trouble. And most individuals that are doing weightlifting are probably not um, people that have the time to devote to being a top-level Olympic lifting athlete. Uh, so most individuals have um, family, kids, a career. They're busy, right? So you don't have as much time devoted towards recovery as well. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about with Chad and also talk with Mike is, uh, you know, what can you do volume-wise and frequency-wise uh, to continue making gains in the novice or intermediate athlete without going too far and getting hurt? As a physical therapist, this is a huge thing I talk uh, to my patients about is that uh, we want to continue making progress and we kind of want the minimal uh, dosage that's going to be effective without going too far and hurting yourself, right? So over time, that's going to help build longevity. You're going to get stronger. And you're not going to get hurt. The other thing is that we're layering on generally a lot of other movements. So are you doing metabolic conditioning, right? Are you doing gymnastics training? Probably. Are you doing other skill work? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into your programming besides just Olympic weightlifting. So um, one of the things Mike was saying is he has a couple clients that he trains um, once a week. And the first week, he does clean and jerk. Second week, he does snatch. And they've been continually making progress. So basically, they do a clean and jerk on uh, the first week, and then a snatch the second, and the third, they go back to clean and jerk. Um, so realistically, you're hitting that lift once every 14 days, which kind of goes against what most people would think about what you need to make progress, but they're seeing good improvements. Um, Chad Vaughn is another good example. So once he um, had to slow down, he had a family, had a, had a kid, um, he wasn't able to train at the same frequency, and he found that uh, he actually made a little more progress when you slow down things a bit, right? Uh, it's not to say that to be an Olympian, you need to decrease your volume by any means, but for uh, the regular Joe, frequency is going to be very important, and uh, we want to make sure we're not going too far in that regard. Um, personally, in my programming, I uh, clean and jerk uh, once every 10 days, 9 to 10 days, snatch once every 9 to 10 days. Uh, we also front squat once every 9 to 10 days. And then we do some form of uh, power clean and power snatch as well. And I throw some accessory work in there. Uh, we're not working the clean and jerk and the snatch that frequently. Uh, the other piece is that there's a lot of other movements in there that we're trying to work. And what I will say is I've had some pretty good feedback from my, uh, my clients. Um, one of my clients recently hit a uh, snatch uh, 225 and uh, also hit a clean and jerk uh, 280, I believe. Um, big time PR, I think it's 30 pounds above. He's been working with me for about six months. And... Um, you know, one of the big things he said is that the volume is just right. You know, we're, we're not putting too much work on our individuals and they're seeing progress or not getting hurt, which is a, a super important thing. So when you're trying to figure out how much uh, volume to put into your programming, I think it's important to look at performance, but just keep in mind that most individuals you're working with are not necessarily going to be trying to perform at the highest level. You're not working with a bunch of Olympic athletes. And uh, you're also going to make great progress if you slow down uh, the frequency and just make small improvements over time. Uh, so I just wanted to plant that little seed in your mind when you are thinking about your programming. Uh, just because I see so many overuse injuries, and uh, if we can spread the period of time that we have between lifts, we have a little more rest, uh, we generally can still make uh, a lot of progress without that risk of overuse. All right. So give me a shot. If you guys have anything to add to this, leave a comment in the, uh, the section below. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I'll speak with you soon.